everyone so in today's video what i wanted to do was show you how i would go about repairing a split using cnd's plexi gel so as you can see on this nail i've removed my gel polish and as you can see i have actually got a split that runs sort of from here all the way across to here and i've actually got one here across to here where my nail bent back this one here actually does lift away i'm not going to do it too much because it is a little bit tender um, so as you can see that completely lifts away now if I had to if I didn't have my plexi gel I would have to cut that all the way back and as you can actually see that does go past my free edge and onto where my nail bed area is so it would actually be really quite sore so obviously what I can do to prevent me having to remove that nail completely is to pop some shaper on to fill in that split and repair that nail now you will also notice if I turn my finger of my thumb to the side where that nail has been bent back you can actually see where it comes down and then it dips and then it lifts back up because it's completely bent backwards so obviously by repairing these splits um obviously that will seal the splits together to stop it from breaking but then what i'm also going to do with the shaper is just to build a little bit um, of an apex and a little bit of thickness to the nail there just to pop some shape back into the nail now i've also split this one not quite so bad but again, across here. So I'm gonna be concentrating on this one for this video and I'll show you how I would go about doing that. So to begin with, what you need to do is obviously make sure that your nail is completely prepped. Now my cuticle work has already been done on this. My nail, as you can see, does have a shine over it. So obviously I've removed my gel polish um, and put some solar oil onto my nail just to sort of rehydrate and as you can see now there is a little bit of a um sort of shine over the top so we we need to remove this surface shine because otherwise the plexi gel and the bonder and the shape won't particularly adhere to that so what you would do is you would get a nail buffer like this nothing too coarse and you would lightly go over it and all that would do is just remove that surface shine. Now, obviously you wanna make sure when you are doing it that you're not pressing on too hard and you're not sort of scrubbing over it. You're just going over it lightly. And what that will do is just take away that surface shine, okay? So that nail is ready to have the product put onto it. You would then obviously need to remove any of the dust. So using your scrub fresh, or your whatever dehydrator you may have, whatever system you're using, you'd obviously just need to go over that. And again, just make sure that you've removed all the dust. And as I've said to you before, if you watch, you'll see how it just dehydrates that nail. Okay, so now you've prepped that nail, you're ready to go in with your bonder. Now it's always important that you always, always start with your bonder when applying any plexi gel because it does need a base to adhere to. And you obviously need to make sure that you are curing it in your CND LED lamp um, because obviously it has been tested to work with that so you will get your full cure on it. So with your bonder, you are filling in those cracks. So obviously my split was all the way across there and it was also across this side right on the corner now when you put the bonder in if it is the sort of split that you can sort of pop back in then obviously pop it back in now luckily for me my split it's it, obviously it's come all the way across but it's not one that sort of popped out or popped back in i sort of have to push it out of place so actually i don't really need to pop this back in it's kind of already in place as such it's just got it it's just very weak across that sort of um free edge so as i say i've kind of gone over that and that will sink into the crack both sides and then as always with your bonder you do obviously need to make sure you are covering the entire nail so that when you come to put your shaper on you've got something to adhere it to just bear with me because i'm using my left hand for this and i am right-handed Okay, so once you've covered your entire nail, you would then need to pop this into your LED lamp and you would put it on button. Now you can, when doing this, if it's a really, really um, deep split and it's one that does need to be popped back into place, what you could do is apply the bonder first to that split, pop the nail back into place, 
cure it for 10 seconds, then take it back out and then apply Bonder to the surface of the nail and then pop it back in for another 10 seconds and cure again. Now, the reason I've just applied it to the split and then the entire nail is because my split, um, as I've mentioned, it comes, it, it has split across, but it hasn't sort of popped out as such. So it's quite an easy split to sort of repair really. So now that we've done that, what you would then need to do is come in with your shaper. So you need to apply two coats for this. So the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to float the first layer over the nail and we're going to concentrate on the area of the split. OK, so the good thing about this product is it does self level and it is a lot thicker in consistency. So let me just show you. So as you can see there, it is a lot thicker in consistency. OK, so that will help to build up and help to go over that crack um, and give it a bit of strength and then once we've done that we can then come in and sort of as I mentioned before fill up that nail just to give it its shape back again where it's obviously bent upwards okay so to begin with I'm going to do as I say we're going to pop some shaper on and we're going to pop it over that split area so scrape it all off the one side so that you're only using one side to work with okay and as I said it is quite thick So remember we're floating. Now obviously my splits are right up by the side. So as always with any product, you do need to be aware not to get it onto the skin. So obviously I'm trying to work up to that area as best I can without getting it all up my side walls. So what I do is I use my finger and I pull that skin away And then it allows me to get that little bit closer. And I'm just going to then cap that free edge. So I'm going to try and get as close as I can because that's right where the split is without touching my skin. And I'm going to come around that free edge. And the same this side, I'll pull that skin away with my other finger. And I will just come around that free edge. Okay. So remember this product does self level. Okay, so when you're happy, that needs to go in and it needs to go on button 2B. Now I have mentioned in previous videos, that when you pop that hand into the lamp, if you've applied that product too thickly, you may get some, may get a heat spike. Now with the button 2B, it does flash for the first 10 seconds. So it does help to prevent any heat spike or any build up um of that exothermic reaction in the finger so you shouldn't have any issues now if you do then it probably means that you've one applied the product too thickly um and if that is the case that i've mentioned to you before in previous videos what you would need to do is to sort of remove that hand place it back in remove it away place it back in just until it that that sort of intense heat disappears but as i say at this point you shouldn't really be getting any sort of um, heat from the nail and if you are it's because you've applied that product a little bit too thick okay so that's had the full cure on button 2b so we've prepared those splits now and what i need to do now is look at building that structure into that nail so that it one it looks more aesthetically pleasing from the side and obviously from all angles uh, but also to give it that bit of strength because otherwise it's just going to snap and bend and exactly that's in the same space uh, in the same place as it has already so obviously we need to build that um, area up so again coming in with your shaper same as we've done before you obviously need to remove it off the one side and then we need to be looking at where we're filling now we're filling that center area so i am going to float this product place them there in the center and i'm going to float it okay and you just build that area up just to help remove that dip in the nail Okay, 
you need some more, go back in, get a little bit more. And again, I'm just gonna pop some more here, just to build that area up from the side profile. So I'm having to build this up probably quite a bit more than you would need to do um, with anybody else's. But as I say, it's because I've really flipped that nail backwards. Move that product where you want it. Now, once you've achieved what you want, Turn your finger or your thumb, or if you're doing it on a client, turn their hand upside down. And what happens is the pull of gravity will then direct that product back into the centre. So it gives it that sort of nice, um, sort of smooth peak, almost. Okay. Just remember before you do pop it in and before you have finished, you have always remembered to cap that free edge. before you go and pop it in. Okay. So remember, if your nail does need building up that little bit more, because it is sort of more uneven or you, you've got more ridges or anything like that in it, you don't have to, to do the two coats. You can do thinner coats and then come in and do another one and build it up that way. Because obviously if you apply the builder too thickly, and then pop the hand in for the two at uh, the one minute you may get that sort of heat spike so just be aware of that when you are doing it okay so that one has been cured now for a second time on button 2b so i'm just turning my hand to the side so that you can see so that has completely now filled in that dip okay i'll just show you down the barrel of the nail it's not too thick now obviously it is thicker than a natural nail would be. So what you might want to do is just go in and refine that. Now, you might be happy with the shape that you've created. You might be happy with the apex. You might be happy with the, the entire nail. And if that's the case, then you can go straight in with your shellac colour. You don't need to remove that inhibition layer. Um, obviously, if you wanted to, that's absolutely fine. You can go over with your disperse and remove that sort of tacky inhibition layer and come in with your shellac, but you don't actually need to. And if you have got this on, you do not need to come in with the base coat for the shellac. Alternatively, if you don't want any varnish on this, you would then come in with your final step and that would be your protector top coat. So you would need to complete this um, step with your protector top coat if you were not going to be applying a colour over the top of this. And again, that will give it that sort of um, protection over the top and it will give it that really nice high shine. And again, your nail will be, it's a lovely clear effect. Now I am going to come in with the design over mine once I've done all my other nails. So... Um, I'm not going to apply a top coat and I do want to just refine this nail a little bit just because it's a little bit thicker than I would like on the ends so I am going to do that now in order to do that I do need to remove that tacky inhibition layer so I'm going to come in now with my disperse so I have just gone in and filed this nail and just refined it slightly off camera I have used the NSI Jura files um, this one's a 180 and I've used this, uh, I use these nail files just because I think these ones are much better than the other ones. They seem to last a lot longer um, and they are really good. You don't have to do quite so much. I mean, you'll tend to find with the Plexi Gel, there's not anywhere near the amount of filing that you would have to do with acrylic anyway, which is another good thing about the Plexi Gel. It does cut down your treatment time quite a bit. And again, you don't have to come in and refine the nails with the plexi gel like you probably would if you were using acrylic. So I'm just going to show you a little bit closer to camera now. So you can see where the split was. It started from there and it went to across to about here. And then obviously this side, same. So you can see that split has completely been repaired. So you can do that to the nail, 
and it's not going anywhere. It's not breaking, it's not splitting and you've completely sealed it all around the edge and all around the edge there. What you will find now is that the nail itself still looks a little bit on the flat side. Now, I'm just going to show you quickly how you would look at building a little bit of an apex on this so it's not completely flat because obviously having a completely flat nail will affect the structure and the integrity of the nail. So if you let somebody go away with a completely flat nail like that, the likelihood is that they'll probably end up breaking it again. So you do need to build a little bit more strength in that now. So we've repaired the split, which is brilliant. But now what I'm going to show you is because a lot of people, what they do is when they build an apex, they start too far back. And so they have this big ledge here by the cuticle. And, you know, that's not what you're not. That's not what you want. One, you put in the strength in the wrong part of the nail. And secondly, it doesn't look particularly nice. It makes the nail look thick and bulky. So what you need to do and the, the way that I find the best way to find where your stress point is, because a lot of people are a little bit unsure, depending on obviously the length of the nail, you would, I find if you touch the end of the nail and you press on it, you'll see the nail change colour. You'll see the nail bed change colour. Okay, so it goes from being pink across here and then when I press on the tip of the nail and push it down, where it changes, that is where your stress point is. So if you were to catch this nail or bend it, if you haven't got any strength in that area there, that nail is going to break. So you need to build this area here. You see? So you don't need to build it massively, but you obviously want to give it a bit of height there. And then that will give it that strength there. So it's not going to break. So what I'm going to do, as I've mentioned, you can come in again with your shaper gel. Um, you could use your builder if you wanted to, but I'm not. I'm going to come in with my shaper. So I'm going to pop a little bit more just in that area there just to build it up. Okay. So let me just show you. So I've popped some of my builder, uh, my shaper gel just on that area there. Now, what you do need to be aware of is that whilst you obviously need to build this area of your nail up, you don't want to be building any thickness towards the end of your nail. And you obviously don't want to be building anything there. Now, the good thing, as I've mentioned before with this product, it does self-level. So you shouldn't get any of those sort of ridges Okay, so I've just popped some on and don't forget you can come in and refine it. Tip my finger upside down and then I'm just going to go in and pop that into the lamp to cure on button 2B. Okay, so that's had another cure and as you can see now that nail is no longer flat. I haven't built a massive apex because it doesn't need it. My nail is not overly long and it is obviously my natural nail underneath anyway. It's not an extension. So you can see now there's a nice natural sort of curve on that nail. So again, you could leave that if you wanted to and go in straight away with your shellac or you could refine it. And I am just going to refine it just slightly. So hopefully that video has helped any of you wondering how you would go about repairing a split using your CND Plexi Gel. If you do have any questions, do pop them in the comments below. And as always, if you do find the video helpful, please do like and subscribe to my channel. And if you click on the notification bell, it will let you know if, when I post any other videos. And as always, if you do want to follow my social media, I will pop a link below for you to follow those. All right, guys. Thanks ever so much. Bye.